I mean, I do think of myself as a writer and not an historian. I mean, I think of myself as a nonfiction writer, and it's sort of this genre that's kind of in between um, like journalism or straight history and art, you know, because you're, I'm still bound to the facts. I can't just like make stuff up. I sometimes go off topic a little bit if I meet an interesting person or if something interesting happens or there's, there are certain things about going to historic sites that open the story up. There's no way I can control that. You know, I think, I think maybe sometimes more traditional historians, they, they have the story they want to tell and that's what they do. And I have an inkling, you know, a little glimmer of what I want to do and then I just go out and see what happens. When I started out as a writer, I started out as an arts writer and as a critic, and I wrote a book about radio, and then I started writing for a radio show in the 90s and about various things, mostly the arts still. And I made a documentary about the Trail of Tears where I drove the Trail of Tears just because, you know, it was part of my family history and I wanted to physically experience that journey. And, um, that was that was it that changed things for me because i just fell in love with the whole process and not just writing about it but researching and going to the places and seeing what had changed and what remained and um and then also it seems like americans are a little underinformed about their history and i remember when that first piece I did aired, I got all this mail from people saying, oh, I didn't know about this event, and I talked about it with my children at the kitchen table, and it seemed like a worthwhile thing to do, you know, to um, be, dare I say, educational. I think a lot of people feel divorced from history because it seems like something that happens to other people. It seems like something that happens to these, you know, bigger, more important, more famous people. It's possible this is, some of my readers, this is gonna be the only book they read on the revolution. So knowing that, I think it kind of broadened the scope of the book a little bit because at every point, wherever I'm trying to locate this one swashbuckling Frenchman on horseback in any given battle or city or, or wherever, um, I'm always providing the historical context of what's going on that got him there and how the army got there or how the, what the politicians are doing behind the army's back or whatever. So I think the book has about at least two layers that way.